Okay, so I've just initialized the patch. If you want to follow along at home, you can do that now. Uh, we're going to be talking about creating and sequencing pads. We're looking at Sculpt Synthesizer, but this kind of knowledge is applicable to any synthesizer, really. We're going to talk about the general shape and the characteristics of pads. And we're going to touch on a few tips and tricks that might help you, uh, especially if you're someone like me, you're not super good at keyboard. Um, I've got a kind of a, a little tip up my sleeve to kind of make this um, a little bit easier. So the first thing that we're going to talk about and we're going to look at is voicing and this is kind of the first thing that you should look at when you're designing any kind of patch really because this is how many voices you get to play with and, and kind of where the oscillators are allocated. So on Sculpt we've got three options. We have Poly where you have all four, Mono where you have one and Duo as you'd expect where you get two. With pads, you would usually expect to go with a poly patch because you want to kind of bed a chord underneath the other things in your track. That's kind of what pads are for. Uh, but you can get equally good results using mono with sculpt thanks to the spread function that we employ. We have this really cool feature on our synths where for the first half of the spread, we do a traditional detune. And for the second half, we go to uh, kind of reallocate the oscillators and snap them into position uh, to create chord shapes and to create kind of uh, octave stacks, which are really good for kind of bass sounds or uh, the octave and fifths, which are really good for organ kind of stack sounds and stuff like this. That's cool, but it's not what we're going to play with today. Uh, I'm going to put the synth into duo mode, so we're going to use two fingers for this. And this is a little tip from me because, like I said, I'm not classically trained. I'm not super good at keys. I'm trying to learn. But um, one of the things that I found made it really easy and helped me to learn the kind of different intervals uh, was to tune the second oscillator up a fifth. Uh, that way I can create these kind of minor, major seventh chords really easily just using two fingers. We're going to first pick some oscillators and I'm going to go for a kind of a general sawtooth affair. I might pick something with a bit more character, like usually with pads, maybe I'll go with something with a little bit of noise in the square. Um, but I'm going to stick to a sawtooth today just to kind of demonstrate some of the movement uh, things that we kind of typically employ when you're creating this sort of stuff. So. So yeah, we've got our nice kind of sawtooth setup, and um, basically the trick for me is to tune the second wave up uh, a fifth. So I'm just going to take wave two, and I'm just going to move that up a fifth. So from So yeah, we've we got this kind of classic housey seventh chord going on now and it's super easy to go up and down the keys. So the next thing that we want to move on to is to talk about movement. This is going to be a bit of a common theme when it comes to designing patches in general. You want to talk about how you know the shape of the sound happens over time and, and what kind of movement it has. Just in general, this is a, a kind of a big topic, uh, no matter what type of patch you're creating. But what I want to do is to kind of create this classic kind of chorusing that you would get um, between kind of analog oscillators where they kind of detune against each other and they kind of move. So I'm going to now detune wave one slightly. And because this is a fifth, it's kind of like a like a perfect number. They are kind of working at the moment in in kind of sync but when i start to detune it you will start to hit them move away you might not hear it with other intervals but with a fifth it's quite obvious so i just want some slow soft movement like this and the next thing to move on to uh, when it comes to movement is the envelopes. So we're going to create a little bit of movement uh, with pad sounds. What you would usually expect is to have this nice soft attack, this kind of mid to long decay 
medium to low sustain and a long release so you get this really soft sound that just kind of washes over everything and um, that's kind of what we're going to do but I'm going to exercise a bit of caution with putting that on the amp envelope because I actually want the sound to start straight away I want it to be I don't want it to be quite as subtle as as kind of a soft attack on the amp I want it to come in quite instantaneously and to kind of have that choppy 90s housey kind of sampled vibe so I'm going to leave the amp envelope kind of blocky like this and I'm just going to add a little bit of release I like the fact that it doesn't have any at the moment because it kind of feels like it could be a sample but so I've just moved over to the filter to increase the release there as well and I'm now going to use this to soften up the general shape of things so I'm going to basically add we've got a lot of uh, filter depth here so I'm going to make this full filter depth that shift and filter and I'm just going to bring the filter down so that we can hear some of the movement over time and I'm going to increase the attack and go for like a medium kind of decay mid to low sustain and, and that release again <laughs> So now we're getting somewhere, we're getting that kind of classic housey, paddy kind of vibe. Uh, we're going to move on to do some modulation to get even more movement going. So the first thing that we're going to look at is to make a vibrato with LFO1. So in order to do this, I am going to assign the LFO to the global tuning, which is not on the silk screening here, it's shift and tempo and swing. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this, I'm going to go minus maybe around 4 or 5 and I am going to bring the rate of this up so I'm going to come out of the assign mode and you can go from this really soft kind of like boards of Canada warble at slow rates to this weird kind of like retro -y, I don't know, I don't know what warbles this consistently but it, it makes me think retro That's not what we're going to use. We're going to go somewhere quite slow. So I'm going to go somewhere around like 80, 82 is a good spot. And I'm going to take the depth all the way down because we're going to control the depth with the mod wheel. So what I'm going to do um, is press shift mod wheel. And this is now flashing. I'm in an assignment and I am going to assign that to the global tune as well. Actually, no, I'm going to assign it, sorry, to the LFO depth. So we're going to put that up to, I don't want it too harsh, I'm going to go maybe about 45. Cool. So now, okay, so I've increased the depth a bit. Now when I use the mod wheel, I've got an argonate just slightly off screen here. Now when I use the joystick, you can hear that kind of nice warbling. Uh, the next thing I'm going to move on to is I'm going to use LFO2 and I'm going to use the kind of frequency divisions that we have here. This is where you don't sync to the clock, instead you sync to the note that you're playing, which is kind of like where you had old analog synths where you could, you know, circuit bend them to have one of the oscillators affecting the frequency of the filter. So you get this really fast modulation happening, but we can also do divisions of that as well. So we can do um, even faster than that, which is kind of crazy audio rate modulation. So I'm going to use LFO2 and I'm going to assign that to uh, the, let's do the wave shape here on wave 2. I don't want to do too much because I don't want it to go super crazy. So I'm going to come out of my assign mode and on LFO2 I'm going to take this depth, oh, I'll leave it there for now. So here, you can hear it's affecting the sound quite a lot.
So it's just adding a bit of kind of character to the sound that wasn't there before. It's quite subtle at the moment. We could really increase this. But I want it to remain quite subtle um, and just to add a little bit of kind of uh, aggression and character where it wasn't there before. So now we've got some nice modulation moving. We're going to move on to talking about sequencing. Um, this is cool because we have a real-time sequencer on Sculpt. We also have an arpeggiator. There's a bunch of performance features like a chord hold, a transpose. So I could use this chord hold to kind of make... Let's take this one here. Which could be cool for sequencing. Um, and we can transpose stuff once you've got your sequence done. I can hold this transpose button. Pew, pew and I can transpose by any amount there and return to the middle to get used to it, which is really nice, but we're just going to record a basic sequence that we can jam in over. So I'm going to hop over into the sequencer presets. Uh, so I'm going to go to the ninth bank and I'm going to choose something that isn't Lucky Peach. I'm going to go this second one here and hopefully there's nothing there. Cool, yeah, there's nothing there. Uh, we're going to record in a quick patch and then we're just going to have a little jam and we're going to talk about animation, which is a super, super cool feature uh, across our synthesizers that have sequences in them where we basically have four lanes that we can record um, kind of any of the twists that you make on these encoders, any of the animation, any of the automation that you would do, you know, to a synth in a DAW. You basically have four kind of like drawable long like real-time envelopes which is really really crazy so i'm going to jump in we're going to record a quick sequence and then we will play with the animators Some nice tips and tricks for creating pads, for getting some movement, some character, uh, some performance functions, and uh, the crazy, crazy, crazy animation, which obviously it does get a bit extreme. But when you use this really subtly, it's adding, you know, four more sources of kind of infinitely more detailed and tailored movement that you can put into your sound. So it's definitely, definitely something I would recommend playing with and kind of wrapping your head around for sound design and things like this. So we're going to jump back now and uh, kind of answer any of the questions that you guys have been putting into the chat box and uh, just round things up there. Thank you for showing up and uh, I hope everybody stays safe.